Okay, today is Thursday the 16th, it's about maybe quarter to eight. And you can see up there the sun is just about to set. I have a special project I'm doing tonight. It has to do with both the moon and also with the fact that yesterday, you see that nice blue sky up there with that nice moon? Well, yesterday, before sundown, there's a number of jets flying overhead, depositing long trains of what I believe to be oxide and metals in the atmosphere to increase the albedo of the Earth. Oh, let me show you Canyon Mountain distance. You might appreciate the view. Isn't that beautiful? Eight to nine thousand foot peak within probably ten miles. Also, our uh, apple tree is doing quite well, but most of its blossoms are now falling, so it's about ready to start bearing fruit. Tiny at first. I've got the observatory partially set up. Oh, I have some occupants. As long as they stay up high, it'll be okay. Typically, if they're down lower, I'll knock them into a jar and take them over to a park. But this year, for some reason, oh, there is one down low. I'm afraid. My friend, you're going to have to go, because you're a little too close to me when I'm doing my astro. So that one I'll probably pick off tomorrow with a job. Here's the scope. The project for tonight is, I have a perfect sky for tonight, even though the moon is one more day advanced. Oh, there's a bird sitting up there. Oh, there it is. Oh, zoom, 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 zoom. Wow, I never realized how close this thing could zoom. Wings. Can you imagine that having wings? Anyway, so the plan is I'm going to re image everything I imaged last night. I'm going to give you just uh, photos uh, of the, what I imaged last night along with the video that I will get off of the Rev2 system so we can compare them. The moon is now another 10 or 15 more degrees advanced than last night. But the key to this is that we're going to see what happens when the powers that be decide that they were going to fly over with a lot of jets and leave long trails of exhaust and go completely across the sky. And I understand why they're doing it, because they want to reflect away more sunlight. But the problem is those chemicals, those oxided metals, may not be very good for our health. And they certainly aren't very good looking. Well, it's about a little after 9.30. I am basically taking some galaxies, 10th, 11th, and 12th magnitude galaxies out of the Will Terry and uh, Atlas of the Heavens. Uh, that particular atlas uh, basically only includes galaxies that are within the reach of, let's say, a 12-inch telescope. So tonight, however, um, the key thing is, is we're doing it on a, basically an eight, a second, just entered the second quarter with the moon. On, as introduced earlier on, yesterday I captured the same series of NGC galaxies and when after a period of atmospheric disturbance caused by jets flying overhead leaving long what we call chemtrails around here and many other people call them by that name. So we're going to be basically comparing views between tonight's view when the sky was free of atmospheric contaminants and yesterday when it wasn't. And even though the moon's a little more advanced and the moon is actually closer to these galaxies, we're going to see if there is any difference in their presentation using real-time imaging. One thing I have done because the moon is present, initially the brightness was set at 20. So I'm going to show you what it is when the brightness of the screen is set at 20. And we'll give that a few... Uh, uh, 30 seconds in order for it to reveal what the screen looks like with the brightness set at 20 when the moon is 
washing the sky with luminosity. And then we'll have another look at it set at 10 and see if there's any improvement. I can see this particular galaxy, which I will look up now and give you the data on. NGC 4136. Galaxy is, like all the galaxies we'll see this evening, are pretty much in comma baronesses. Except I will seek out a few fainter galaxies if we can reveal the 14th magnitude galaxy that I was barely able to see the previous evening. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop the brightness of the screen down because of the moon wash to 10%. All right, so there's our view. NGC 4136, Galaxy in Comma Berenices, which basically means uh, Queen Berenices Coiffier. It's a magnitude 11 galaxy, fairly large, 3.9 by 3.6 in face on, spiral with a bar in a lowercase c, and a ring. Well, it's pretty hopeless to ex hope to see, to expect to see a ring this evening, although 11th magnitude galaxy with a ring would present that ring on a night when the moon isn't present and it's as clear as it is this evening. This particular galaxy is 26 million light years distant, which basically says it's probably somewhere around 25 to 30,000 light years in diameter. We are at right ascension 12 hour, 9 minutes, 17 seconds, declination plus 29, 55 minutes and 37 seconds. And I would say that the view is probably comparable to the one I got last night. So let's move on though do a go through the complete cycle before we draw any conclusions. Let's watch this galaxy develop on the screen. This is NGC 4150 also in comma parentheses. NGC 4150, another galaxy in Coma Berenices, is slightly fainter but smaller. Magnitude 11.6, 2.3 by 1.6 arc minutes, so a supra oblate. This is a lenticular spiral, 45 million light years distant and roughly about the same size as NGC 4136, I recall. The galaxy's more condensed. It is a lenticular spiral, so class Z in my estimation, a fully mature spiral galaxy that is about to enter into its middle ages as an elliptical were it to capture some more mass or condense more, even more of its cold dark matter into stars. This is a 12, right ascension 12, 10, 33, Declination 30, 24, 06. And the galaxy is quite present on the screen, even as it was last night. The only thing I might be able to say is there's a little bit of an aura around it and a sense of, uh, of a little bit of structure. So I will have to compare it with the screenshots I took of last evening's uh, videos to be able to get a better sense. Okay, let's watch this galaxy develop. It's NGC 4203. Looks like it's also a fairly condensed galaxy from what I can see so far. NGC 4203, I am punching in on the head controller of the Gemini 2 as I speak. Very similar to the last galaxy, which was 4150. NGC 4203, another galaxy in Coma Berenices, magnitude 10.9, so brighter and a little bit larger, 3.5 by 3.2 arc minutes, a lenticular spiral with a bar. 
50 million light years distant puts this one a little larger, maybe 35,000 light years in diameter. We're at 12, 1505 right ascension, 33, 11, 50 in declination. I'm going to go ahead and dial in the next galaxy as this one continues to develop. And that will be NGC 4245. NGC 4245, of course, another galaxy in Comma Berenices, because that's basically where I looked in the Will Tyrion star guide, sky guide. This one's a little fainter, magnitude 11.4, 3.3 by 2.4 arc minute spiral with a bar, a lenticular A, which means it's one half times removed from the Z class of lenticulars. This galaxy also has a ring, and we would ordinarily be able to make it out on a good dark night. 34 million light years distant puts it at about 30,000 light years in diameter. We're at 12 hours, 17 minutes, 36 seconds, 29, 36, 28 in declination. And the appearance of this galaxy is very similar to the last, which was 4203. And you see 4251's a galaxy once again in Comma Berenices, magnitude 10.7, 3.6 by 2.5 arc minutes, spiral with a bar, uh, and a lenticular with a ring. Once again, 44 million light years distant, which is probably about 35 to 40,000 light years in diameter. We're at right ascension 12.18.08, declination 28.10.29. And it looks like you, we've got some extensions going from the 12 to the 6 o'clock position on this galaxy. Although, I have no sense of the presence of a ring. All right, we're going to watch NGC 4274 develop on the screen as I dial in the data. This one, see, this particular galaxy, NGC 4274, is rather bright. It's magnitude 10.4 and large. 6.8 by 2.4 arc minutes, which gives it almost a 3 to 1 aspect ratio, and that's quite apparent on the screen that it is elongate. Spiral with a bar, lowercase a, b, and a ring, once again, 43 million light years distant. And the rings, of course, are typically about 4.5 magnitudes fainter than the galaxies themselves, which would put this ring at about magnitude 15 which probably is out of reach on an uh, second, early second quarter moon. It's pr less than about 15 to, no more than 20 degrees distant from the galaxy itself and the sky. Um, rings, of course, are basically the extensions of spiral arms that tend to be wrapping right around the galac galaxy itself. You know, I almost have a sense of the ring on this one, so that's promising. And let's go ahead on to our next study, which is 4278. NGC 4278 was, if not a hop, skip, and a hop, maybe a hop, skip, and a jump from NGC 4274. This galaxy is slightly brighter, magnitude 10.2 and smaller, 4 by 3.9 arc minutes. It is, in fact, an elliptical galaxy, and it is so close to the spirit, uh, 
spherical in its presentation. 4 by 3.9 arc minutes that it's probably an elliptical class 1. There is a fainter galaxy in the same field, right about there. Probably are several, actually. Galaxy is magnitude 10.2, as I said, and 41 million light years distant puts it probably around 50,000 light years in diameter. NGC 4283 was just a tiny leap and it was that second galaxy because we can still see NGC 4278 in the field here. So we've now gone to this other galaxy which is visibly fainter and smaller. We'll get some data on it. And you see 4283, Galaxy and Comma Berenices is a couple of magnitudes fainter, magnitude 12.1 and smaller, but it is a perfect elliptical 1.4 by 1.4 arc minutes. 47 million light years distant pretty much means this is, a, this is really a sub-dwarfish elliptical, about 15,000, maybe 20,000 light years in diameter. We're at 12, 20, 20 in right ascension and declination, 29, 18, 37, and I'll repeat that all these studies have basically been drawn from the Will Terrian uh, Sky Guide, and I'm very thankful for it. A good friend of mine, and also an amateur astronomer, gave it to me, and it is proving as particularly useful in a time where the sky is overrun a bit by the moon wash to find galaxies in the tw 10 to 12 magnitude range. It'll be interesting if there's any galaxies in the Tyrian Guide much fainter than magnitude 12. Um, so far, that's this one, 12.1, is about as faint as I've seen yet. There does appear to be a third galaxy, by the way, on this screen. NGC 4314 is a galaxy in Comma Berenices. Once again, magnitude 10.6, 3.9 by 3.7 arc minutes, which is typical of uh, galaxies in the magnitude 10.5 range. Spiral with a bar, lowercase a, 39 million light years distant, puts this at about 30,000 light years in diameter. We are at 12, 22, 32, and declination 29, 53. 43. There is some nice extensions of this galaxy that seems to have several satellite galaxies associated with it, or at least galaxies that share the same field of view. So, so far at this point, I would say this has been the most detailed presentation of a galaxy yet. And it's rather strange because 4314 is nearly a face on at 3.9 by 3.7 arc minutes. So maybe what I'm going to do is punch this in again to see if it moves because the aspect ratio doesn't track against what's here on the screen of the hand controller. Here we go. Didn't go anywhere, did it? Okay, so that was 4314 and sometimes they can surprise you in that regard. Now we're going to leap by 100 and go to 4414. Here we have another seemingly edge-on presented galaxy, or at least a sub-oblate. And you see 4414, galaxy in comma parentheses, magnitude 10.1 is once again a little bit fatter than I would expect. 3.6 by 2 arc minute spiral with a lowercase c. 39 million light years distant puts it at about 35,000 light years in diameter. We're at 12, 26, 27 and declination 31, 13, 22.
Well, this is our first galaxy that's outside of Comma Berenices. It's actually in Virgo. I'm not sure why I added the previous night. I think I was looking for something special to go out on. NGC 4442 is a magnitude 10.4, 4.5 by 1.8 arc minute galaxy, so subably. Spiral with a bar of the lenticular class, 49 million light years distant. Right ascension 1228.03, declination 948.14. I would say this galaxy is also about 15 to 20 degrees from the second, early second quarter moon. And I believe I have one more galaxy on the list and then I'm gonna explore a little bit. And that's because I want to determine what our limit is for the evening in terms of galaxy magnitudes. Okay, let's watch this one develop as I get the data for you. What I'm hoping to see here is a 13.9 magnitude NGC 4447 in comma parentheses. It's magnitude 13.9 is mentioned smaller than one arc minute, 0.9 by 0.7, spiral with a bar of a lenticular class and a ring. Now, uh, 326 million light years distance, so it's the most distant galaxy we turned up tonight. Now, I have to say, Last night, I could not see this particular galaxy on the, DV, the TFT monitor screen. I am kind of seeing it a little bit tonight, and this will be a good comparison. I did see it when I went through the videos in the previous night, and I would say pretty much it's on the border of visibility at magnitude 14. And given it being magnitude 14, especially given the fact the sky is pretty clear this evening, the moon is inducing maybe about a two magnitude drop in limited threshold galaxy viewing this evening. I mean, I can look at the sky, I would never have declared this sky sky dark. Uh, the sky's got color in it and it's got luminosity in it. Uh, so we are basically losing some obviously losing some luminosity competing with the light in the sky induced primarily by the moon this evening but yesterday also by scattering caused by residual chemtrails. Okay we're now making a run to probably the largest galaxy of the evening. Uh, this is not exactly what I had in mind, but when it popped up on the screen, I just felt it would be very valuable to have a look at it. It's NGC 4472, and I do believe 4472 is a Messier-class galaxy. So let's confirm that. It's also Messier 49, which is one of the brightest galaxies in in the comma Virgo group that I had previously imaged when the moon was more or less in abeyance. And so I'll probably have to do a screen cap of that view just so we can compare it. 4472 and 49's magnitude 8.4 but very large in face on. 9.8 by 8.2 arc minutes. It's an elliptical class for 60 million light years distant. I do not believe it is the capital galaxy, however, of the comma Virgo group, although I would have to confirm that. Um, we're at 1229.46 and 8 degrees above the celestial equator, and I would say we are within 15 degrees of the second quarter moon. Let's keep looking for some 14.5 or 15th magnitude galaxies and reasonable sky position. All right, then, you know what? I just encountered another Messier, and I do believe this is the capital galaxy, the most central galaxy in 
um, it's M87. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and look it up as M87. Urgh, darn it. I think I forgot which one it was. Uh, oh, it's 4486. Okay, let's go to NGC 4486. All right, this is pro this I believe is a capital galaxy, the most central, most massive galaxy, not the largest optically, because it's only 120,000 light years across, as I recall, but it's got an extended region of luminosity that goes out to almost a, may a million light years, which is very faint and of different frequencies than the core of the galaxy. NGC 4486, Galaxy Virgo, M87, 8.6 magnitude, 8.7 by 6.6 .6 arc minutes. So you can tell right there it's smaller than Messier 49. It's elliptical of the class 1, but it has peculiarities. It says 61 million light years distant, but I believe I did some further research on it. It was 53. Most of the galaxies in the comma Virgo group range from about 45 to 60. So that is our look, and I'll also have to call up an image of that as well for comparison purposes, pre and current moon conditions. Well, this should be interesting. We're going to another 13.9 magnitude galaxy, NGC 4502, just for a quick comparison between the two of them because it's amazing. There are so few. Most of the galaxies are in the 10th, 11th, and 12th magnitude range throughout this comma Virgo region. And so uh, I'm not able to quite find something that's far enough north. NGC 4502, galaxy in comma parentheses, magnitude 13.9. Oh, it's nice because it's an oh, oblique 1.1 by 0.6 arc minute spiral with the bar, the lowercase c, 73 million light years distant. It's at 12.3203, declination 16.41.14. Um, if there is a galaxy, probably will prove to be that one there, which is kind of threshold. There are several other on the screen, but we're looking for something in this region here. So it looks like we're pretty much running up against the threshold at magnitude 14. However, I really want to get something in the 14.5 to 15th magnitude to be more definitive about the effects of the moon. I'm really not having much luck. This is NGC 4518A. It's a little farther south than I really wanted. It's magnitude 15, it's in Virgo, 1 by 0.4 arc minutes, so it should be pretty distinct if it turns up to giving that aspect ratio. Spiral with a bar of the lenticular class with a ring, 292 million light years distant, puts it pretty much up there with our own Milky Way in size. We're at plus seven degrees and, well, almost eight degrees. So we're gonna call it on this one. I think we may be actually seeing this 15th magnitude galaxy in this region of the screen. And what I'm going to do is proceed to something that we might want to Carpe Noctum out on, a brightish galaxy that we can bid adieu to the night sky, even though the moon is doing the best it can to illuminate sky and earth below. We'll give this a watch as I give you the data as the galaxy forms on the screen. NGC 4526. It's a galaxy in Virgo, also known as NGC 4560. Got duplicated. Magnitude 9.7. Well, what I liked about this galaxy 
It's 7 by 2.5 arc minutes, so it's sub-oblate, spiral with a bar, lower and uh, reticular clash, 51 million light years distant. Probably puts this one around 100,000 light years in diameter. To right ascension, 12 hour, 34 minutes and 3 seconds, declination, plus 7, 41 minutes and 57 seconds. And with this view, of NGC 4526, I say carpe noctum.